Well, good morning. This is Pastor Victoria with the ARC International Ministries out of Atlanta, Georgia. How are you today? Thanks for joining us. We are always, always glad for this opportunity to be with you, to share a word of the Lord with you, and to interact. So thank you so much for joining us live. Um, we hope that during our broadcast, you'll check in with us, say good morning. We're waiting to say good morning to you. Let us know where you're joining us from, what city, what state, what country. Uh, we want to get to know you a little better. And this is the beginning of our opportunity to do that. We also ask that you would consider sharing our broadcast. If it's a blessing to you, go ahead and share it so that it can be a blessing to someone else. Also, for more information about our ministry, you can reach out to us through our website at www.thearcinternational.org. If we can pray for you, if we can answer any questions for you, if you'd like some more information about the ministry, even if you'd like to give to the ministry, you can do everything online through our website. And also, if you subscribe to our newsletter there, there is a free giveaway that we have that'll be a blessing to you. It's all about accountability. So thank you again for joining us today. If you're watching us via replay, you might be looking at us later in the week, may not necessarily be Sunday morning. That's cool. We're just glad to be able to sow this word into your life. And again, we hope that you will subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have kind of moved off of Facebook Live. We generally share out through that channel, but our live streaming is primarily on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe so that you can be aware when we launch any content out on YouTube um, around the word of God. We also do a lot of leadership development training. We also do some things around technology. I've been doing some workshops lately, helping individuals, ministries, businesses that want to do live streaming like you're seeing now and teaching a little bit about Zoom uh, and some what I call some social media uh, online meeting etiquette. So you got to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can see what's out there. Be a part of all that we're doing at the ARC. And listen, we're preparing right now to launch a brand new website. So all I can say is that it's coming and it's going to be more opportunities to actually take part in uh, things at the ARC and especially for your growth and your learning. You know, our mission and our vision here is to equip leaders and to lead dreamers. And so we do a lot of teaching and workshop and instruction and facilitation here. We believe in continual growth and learning in the word of God and in those areas that God has called us to. So we hope that you will become uh, a part of some of the workshops and classes that we're doing and that you will share them with others. Before we get started this morning, just a couple of um, quick announcements I want to make. One is we also have another learning opportunity that's opened up. And let me just share uh, a little bit of more, a little bit more about this. This is called the relevant word. And this is our midweek Bible study. We do this by way of Zoom. And it is on Thursdays from 8 to 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you will come to our website at thearcinternational.org, all of the information that you need to either join by way of computer or dial in by way of telephone. All the information is there on our website. We are very careful and safe about your security in terms of joining. So we've got a special time set up for you um, and we try to make it easy for you to join and be a part. These Thursdays are a little bit laid back and so um, not formal at all. We're just sharing the word together. There's lots of discussion from the participants in our Bible study and we sure would love to have you there. So again, this is Thursdays from 8 to 8.45 p.m., a relevant word. This is our midweek Bible study. And if you visit our website at thearcinternational.org, you can find out all of the information that you need to actually join us and be a part. Lastly, I've got to talk about Leader Camp. This is our yearly leadership development certificate course and conference this year it's going to be what you know it's going to be virtual so join us october 16th through the 18th 2020 for leader camp this is a three-day virtual leadership conference 
Friday will be the pre-conference certificate courses. So if your goal is to earn our leadership certificate, you want to be sure that you are registered for the Friday classes. Saturday and Sunday is our general conference days. We'll have so many amazing, amazing speakers um, that you can partake of. We're talking fierce leadership this year, and we're talking about fierce conversations and fierce solutions. And so I like to think of this as what are those conversations that really the church, the body of Christ needs to be having in this day and time and is not having, and what are some solutions around some of those things that we need to be talking about? What are some solutions for moving forward? So we don't wanna just be talking loud and saying nothing, and we don't wanna just be talking and not coming up with any next steps around it. So we invite you again to join us for Leader Camp 2020, October 16th through the 18th. Registration is open now on Eventbrite. If you go out to Eventbrite and just search for Leader Camp 2020, it'll pop right up for you and you can get even more detailed information about our speakers and what you can expect to see on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. So we're going to prepare to go into the word uh, this morning. And the word this morning uh, is called Who's Fooling Who? And it's all about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. And if there was ever a time that we need to know what's true, that we need to be more um, discerning about what people are saying, that we need to have clear direction as we try to make decisions? Is there ever a time that that is needed? It is especially needed now. And so um, I'm going to be teaching this on this for the next few weeks, actually. Today, we're going to dig in. We're going to talk about Holy Spirit. And for some of you, maybe give a good introduction to the Holy Spirit. We're also in this series going to talk about wisdom, and we're going to talk about character and integrity because these are three things, our relationship with the Holy Spirit, godly wisdom, and really understanding, practicing, and looking for character and integrity. These three things, I'm going to tell you, they can take you a long way. So uh, I hope that you will join us not only today, but for the rest of this series. Again, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube page so that you don't miss any one of the broadcasts around this. Let me go ahead and pray and we'll get started for today. So, Father, we thank you and bless you and praise you. You are an awesome God. We thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that your word will be presented in such a way that we can apply it to our lives, to the very situations of our lives on today. I thank you, Father God, for using this vessel in the way that you use this vessel to pour out to your people. Just as you've anointed me to teach this morning, you've anointed them to hear, you've anointed them to learn. And we just thank you, Father God, for higher heights and greater depths in you. God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise this morning. And we thank you, Father God, that this is a relevant right now word for your people and for those, Father, that are coming to know you in this season. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So who's fooling who? Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. I wanted to make sure I put those words, spirit of truth, right up there at the beginning, because the understanding must be that Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He is not wrong. He is the one that will always lead you in the right direction. And that when we listen at and we have to make decisions around so many things that are being said and so many people, especially in this day and time who are saying them, Nobody wants to be fooled. Nobody wants to be hoodwinked, uh, bamboozled, or sent off in the wrong direction. But Holy Spirit can always, 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 and will always lead you and guide you in the direction of truth. If you ask, if you engage, and if you begin to learn to walk with Holy Spirit. 
So we're going to begin um, with a word in John 14 and 16. John 14 and 16. And I'm going to read verse 17 as well. So the word of the Lord says this. And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate. An advocate is someone to help or support. He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. But the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him for he lives with you. And here's most importantly, and will be in you. So as I teach throughout today, you are going to just have more insight about what it means to have the Holy Spirit in you and for you to be in the Holy Spirit. So my husband and I are working on a, uh, a business and um, it's part of marketing. And some of you are probably familiar with this. You usually come up with a little slogan um, for your business or for your product. We have a series of products uh, that are called buddy products. We're working on the first one. And again, hopefully we'll have some more. And our slogan for this is made for you to work with you. Our My Buddy products are made for you to work with you. And when I think about that, I always think about the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit lives in us. He was made and designed especially for us and to work with us. And this is critical because far too many of us live without walking with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And we're trying to live out our lives, walk out this existence in the earth realm without this supernatural help that we have available. We hope in the future that we're gonna have a line of uh, buddy products as I shared. So not just one, but many. And again, when I think about that, I'm like, you know, who doesn't feel better when they know that they have their buddy with them? We have some seasons and some times and some things that we do alone. But most of us, we got that best buddy. We got that one we know that's always there. They're going to be there day and night. We can always call them. And this is also the person. And this is funny as I think about it. You know who that person is in your life. If you want the truth, that's the one you're going to call, right? Always going to give you the truth. And as we go further and specifically talk about the Holy Spirit, we can add on these attributes. Cannot lie. Is never wrong. Loves me unconditionally. Is not two-faced or double-minded and has my best interest at heart and intercedes for me before the Father. Listen, this all just means the world to me. And this is the Holy Spirit in my life in the life of the believer and anyone that will welcome him in first by believing in Jesus the Christ, being saved, and then this supernatural help, this supernatural guidance that you have in your life each and every day. It's more than about what happens after you die. That is first and foremost a part, but what about now? What about living your life on a daily basis? I'm here to tell you, you got some help. So again, who's fooling who? Learn to walk with Holy Spirit. Learn to be discerning. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. And you're going to find yourself coming out ahead. You see, God loves us so much that he said through his son, Jesus, and this is Jesus talking to the disciples because the disciples were concerned when Jesus began to share with them, you know, I'm not going to be here always. I'm leaving. But God granted Jesus um, this word and this information specifically for the followers of Jesus. It's like, don't worry, I'm going to send you another one, the spirit of truth. And this time, the one he sent wouldn't simply dwell with them, but he was going to dwell on the inside of them. 
So Jesus walked daily with his disciples. He dwelled with them. But the other that was sent when Jesus left, oh my gosh, not only dwelled with them, but he dwelled on the inside of them. And he dwells on the inside of us today. And guess what? There is even another level. It is not only him dwelling in us, but when we learn how to dwell in him, this is all about the Holy Spirit, y'all. Holy Spirit is that voice of godly reason. It's the voice of warning, the voice of comfort. It's that voice we sometimes we try to ignore, it, but we know we can't. Even if we are not obedient to it, we do hear it. We can't deny it. But we got to understand, too, that not being obedient to it, well, that's an issue. It's one thing not to understand or hear or know a word or know the next direction. But it's another thing to have that information before you, but you don't follow that guidance. If you're struggling seeing that, let's think about parenting and children. That's like it's like that sometimes with our children. We're giving them the direction and the guidance. So they can't say they don't know. They don't understand. But sometimes they do what? They just choose not to follow. But we are to be maturing. We are to be growing. And as you mature and as you grow, you come to recognize, recognize the wise voices in your life. You come to recognize, and here we go when we talk about growing as a Christian and maturing, we come to recognize the voice, the promptings, and the leadings of the Holy Spirit, and we move forward in those directions. Amen? So um, my mentor and our apostle here at the Ark, Dr. Kluani, wrote a blog article called Created to Be Like God, and I wanted to share a piece of it with you today because it's really relevant to our conversation. In it, she says this. She says, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to be our guide. It's not about simply knowing about the Holy Spirit doctrinally. It's not just about experiencing his reality on a hit and run basis every now and then. And it's not about perceiving the Spirit impersonally as an expression of God's power. So the gist is here, we need to learn to make this thing personal because it is about experiencing the life-giving Holy Spirit continuously, continuously on a day-to-day -day basis, moment by moment as your personal guide and counselor. Recognize the Holy Spirit as being personally present in your life. Um, a few years ago, my husband and I were official photographers for the Trumpet Awards here in Atlanta. And when the Trumpet Awards week was in motion, they had thousands of people coming into the city, coming downtown to the Hyatt Regency to be a part of this event. Many of them had never been there before. The uh, founder of the Trumpet Awards Foundation, Mr. Nona Clayton, always shared one of the most important things volunteers did during that time was provide direction because people were coming in that had never been there before. They had never been to that hotel, that conference space, and they needed to know which way to go. And so there were a lot of volunteer roles that you could hold within this organization. And oftentimes, if your role was one to stand and hold a direction sign, people just felt like that wasn't very important. And she had such a way of helping them to understand how important it was for people to feel like they knew which way they needed to go. Oh, my goodness. Holy Spirit, is that for us in our life each and every day? The one there showing us which way to go, which path to take. As we are hearing in this day and time, so many voices politically, um, from the um, medical arenas and otherwise from the educational standpoints, we have so many decisions to make and we need to know which way to go. What is the specific direction for us? What is the specific direction for our family? What's the answer there? Y'all is walking with the Holy Spirit.
So let me um, go on here and begin by uh, ask, answering actually this question. And that is, who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? So for the majority of Christian denominations, Holy Spirit, or sometimes you hear the word Holy Ghost, is this third person of the Trinity. This is the triune God manifested, God the Father, God the Son, and God what? The Holy Spirit. Each of these three being God. The study of the Holy Spirit, which we're doing a little bit of that today, is called pneumatology. And the English term pneumatology comes from two Greek words. The first Greek word is pneuma, and it's spelled P-N-E-U-M-A, and it means spirit. And the second is the word logos, L-O-G-O-S, which means teaching about. So pneumatology includes the study of the person of the Holy Spirit and the works of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're doing today. I'm teaching about and you're learning about Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, first and foremost, is a person. So being a person, the Holy Spirit has feelings. He can become sad or angry and others can insult him and blaspheme against him. Now, there are several scripture references, Isaiah 63 and 10, Matthew 12 and 31, Acts 7 and 51, Ephesians 4 and 30, and Hebrews 10 and 29, several scripture references. I'm going to focus on two today. Matthew 12 and 31 is the first one. Let me read. It says, and so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. So what is blasphemy? So this word teaches us that it, that it is a sin to openly defy the Holy Spirit and especially to attribute the works of the Holy Spirit to Satan or to being something that's evil. And that generally happens out of ignorance, a lack of understanding. And also it can happen because of pride, because we just decide we're not going to open our mind, open our hearts to believe in something greater than ourselves. So you better be careful. We got to be careful. If we find in our heart that we've just decided not to believe that the Holy Spirit exists, even if we don't understand everything, even if we've not experienced everything yet, um, a lot of people have not experienced speaking in tongues, speaking in their prayer language. And we believe God to release that in you even today while you are listening to this broadcast. But you got to want it. You know, it has to be something that you open yourself up to and a choice to believe it again, even if you have not experienced it yet. It's that decision to believe that Holy Spirit is real. And that's really that first step to opening yourself up. We are spiritual beings. We are. We are spiritual beings in a fleshly body. And not understanding what that means equates to denying and closing off a very vital part of who we are as we live in life today in this earth realm. So second scripture I do want to uh, share with you today is Acts 7 and 51. It says this, you stiff necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. So here we go again. As believers, as believers, we too can resist the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives through pride. That's being stiff necked. You're stubborn. But also we can quench and even grieve the indwelling of the spirit of God. My prayer today is that our ears and our hearts would be spiritually circumcised. That means they would be open or cut open right day by day and that we can pay heed to these gentle and tender promptings of the spirit for God resists the proud. That's his word. He resists the proud. That's in first Peter five, but he gives grace upon grace to the humble. So the ask here today is that you just begin to consider. I like to say this, and this again is one thing our apostle always says to me, 
you won't necessarily agree with everything that I say or believe. And we can still walk together without agreeing on every single point. But we ought to be able to have some good discussion. And when something is presented to us that's a bit different, we ought to be able to pray about it. We ought to be able to consider it and open ourselves up to the possibility that there is more and there is more in God and more that God has for us that we just simply have not experienced yet. So the Holy Spirit has intentions. He shows willfulness and discretion. He loves, he communicates, he testifies, he teaches. This word is in Nehemiah 9, 20. You can find this in John 15 and 26, in Acts 13 and 2, and in Romans 8, 26 through 27. I want to go through a few of those. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 9 and 20, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The word says this, you gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths and you gave them water for their thirst. These are all things that the Holy Spirit provides. Amen. That instruction, that teaching so that we can go to the next level so that we can grasp the next thing that the father has for us. Hear the word of God in Romans 8, 26 through 28. It says, meanwhile, and this is from the message version of the Bible. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit, and that's Holy Spirit, is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't even matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and sometimes our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. What is our pregnant condition? That's that state when we're waiting. That's that in-between time that we cannot perhaps see what's forward or we cannot see how to move forward. Holy Spirit knows and is aware. The word goes on to say that's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. So listen, the Holy Spirit guides us, helps us when we're weak, when we're confused, when we don't know which way to go, when we're stuck in this place of indecision. You can have clarity, but we must listen for the Holy Spirit. So many times we rush, we don't give him a chance to speak, to reveal, even in our prayer time, so many times we're talking so much, we're not listening. And when it comes to answers, it's not always right there that moment in that moment of prayer that we receive that answer. It is so often that it is for me after prayer. Maybe I'm walking through the house or I go on, go out, go about my day and something will occur. Something I will see or notice that will trigger in my spirit. And I will know that this is the answer that has come from Holy Spirit. Could come from nature even could come from a turn of circumstances. I taught last week learning to see the hand of God in things. Point being here, ask the Holy Spirit. Ask him. Ask him, say, Holy Spirit, show me what you want me to do. Many times, now I got to say this, I have to go here. Many times we know what to do. He's already spoken. He's already given the answer. But we keep asking again and we keep praying again as if the answer he has already given is going to change. So listen, think about those times with your children when they've asked you something and perhaps you've told them no. And they keep asking again and again. And sometimes you say, all right, then go ahead. Go ahead on to do it. And you can tell by the inference in my voice, I'm saying I've already given the answer. I've already given you the direct way to go, but you insist on doing something different. So I won't release you. Go ahead. Go ahead. And so we know that when we get off track, when we make decisions that are not the best decisions, there are consequences behind them. So listen, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. 
but with Holy Spirit, learning to hear him, follow his guide, follow his direction. We can be more discerning. We can be more at peace with our decision. And I believe in my heart that when we have really sought him, sought to hear him and to listen to him, even if we start off in the wrong direction, he just has this way of doing a course correction with us midstream or correcting something that may even come from our mouth midstream. He'll put a, what we like to say sometimes is a check in my spirit. I feel something uh, in, in that stomach area that says, wait, I'm heading down the wrong direction. Amen. Now, next is how do we receive Holy Spirit? So I'm going to follow this with a demonstration as well. So at salvation, when we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, when we humble ourselves by saying, I can't do this alone, I, I don't have the information, I don't have the power, I don't have the wherewithal, I need Father, you're, you in my life, there is someone greater than me. I'm connected to my creator. He holds my future in his hands. When we believe upon Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross, that his death, his burial, and his resurrection restored us back into this perfect relationship with God, regardless of what happened with Adam and Eve, God didn't change his mind. When we accept Christ there, we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and that is him in us. Now, I want to begin this demonstration just with this glass of water. Consider this is us as the glass and Holy Spirit, the water. So at salvation, we are filled with the Spirit. So this is the water on the inside of us. Now, the next process is us in him or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is that place of overflow. This is that point at which we are being led by Holy Spirit. And this is important because a lot of times people make Jesus their savior here, but they never make him their Lord. Or in other words, they don't begin walking in obedience to him or they, or they don't become immersed. So here is the example to help you with immersion. So this is Holy Spirit in us. Okay. Water in the word of God is often known or referred to as Holy Spirit. When we go to the next step to talk about immersion, now it's not only him in us, but it's us in him. So immersion is when now we are in him, we are filled to overflow. Amen? We are filled to overflow. This is immersion. Let me make sure I hold it closer, or maybe a little bit back so you can see. This is being filled to overflow. This is us in him. When we are in him, when we have made him our Lord, then he can lead the way. We move from just the infilling or indwelling to that place of overflow as we spend time with the Holy Spirit in prayer, as we learn to talk with him and walk with him throughout our day. I like to say, as we learn to practice the presence of God, we have to do more listening than talking. Now, people in overflow or as we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we have come under immersion, right? And immersion is generally underwater. And again, this is also known as baptism. There are different signs in their lives. One of the signs, but only one. And I want to be clear about that. But it happens to be fairly notable is this evidence of speak by way of speaking in tongues or speaking in the prayer language. I'm going to be doing a separate teaching on that in just a few weeks, um, which talks about the importance, right? Not the requirement for salvation. I want to be clear, but the importance of our prayer language and how it helps us and benefits us here as we live today. 
Now, I want to say this again because I always want to be clear. I don't want to leave any confusion. I'm asked this question all the time. Am I required to speak in my prayer language to go to heaven? Absolutely not. Am I required to speak in my prayer language uh, to be saved? Absolutely not. But the gift of speaking in tongues in the prayer language is a benefit that is there for every believer, for every single believer. So first step there, what? Open yourself up to it. And as we teach more about that uh, in another part of this series, um, your hunger and your desire for it um, will be triggered and built. And if on today, I got to say this because I'm right here, you are already hunger for it, be it unto you. Let your prayer language or your speaking in tongues, let that gift be manifested in your life today, immediately, right in this moment. So listen, I understand for many different reasons. And often it's because of lack of understanding. It is human nature to reject what we don't understand. And when we don't understand Holy Spirit, if we don't understand speaking in tongues, if we can't find places to relate to these things in our lives, if there has been nothing there to build up our hunger or desire for more of God, and that's what we're talking about here. We're not just talking about more gifts, more demonstrations, but we're talking about more of God because with more of God, the other things actually follow. Hopefully, our teaching on today is beginning to clear up just some of these questions in your life. Amen? So let me keep going. What is the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer? Well, his primary role is to lead us and to empower us to make the best choices and to walk in our purpose. It's to live that God kind of life that we were all created for. Now, sometimes that leading, it involves conviction. This process of conviction involves God's nudging or whispering something to us that we need to address or kind of fix in our life. He nudges us when we're about to move in the wrong direction. And then his desire and his direction for us is to kind of turn us around, to lead us in the right direction. We can hear and sense him saying, go here, don't go there. Now say this, but don't say that. Ask them, don't approach them. How many times each day are we facing these types of choices? And what would it mean to you to know that you have someone walking with you to give you the spiritual insight that you need to make the right choices? I'm going to tell you again, it means the world to me. Now, I wanted to define uh, con convict or conviction for you. The word convict or to reprove in the Greek is elegacho. It's spelled E-L-E-G-C-H-O. And it means to bring to light or to expose a fault. It shows the matter for what it really is, what it truthfully is. And conviction comes simply to persuade you to change or to do something else or to do something different. So the Holy Spirit brings to light actions and mindsets and, and our thinking that is wrong. And he also is there to persuade us of what the truth really is. So I go back to where I started at the beginning of this broadcast. Who's fooling who? The ability to be able to more greatly discern truth is, expo is extraordinary. And discernment, to talk about what discernment is, discernment is a perception in the absence of judgment of an individual with a view to obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. So the Holy Spirit is here to help us to be more discerning of what we're hearing, of what we're seeing, of what we're sensing on a daily basis so that we aren't hoodwinked, so that we aren't bamboozled, so that we aren't led astray. And listen, in a time when there's so much division, in a time when there's so much disagreement amongst leadership, we need, we need the divine intervention of the Holy Spirit in our life on a day-to-day -day basis. Conviction 
because it comes from God. It's meant for your good. It's meant to keep you on track. It's not meant to do you any harm, to control you or to bring you to shame. So we need this in our lives. We all need this in our lives. And this again is that guidance from the spirit of the Lord. On our own, we're going to constantly make mistakes, bad choices, wrong decisions, because none of us are perfect. But I'm telling you that we have a level of help, supernatural help, that many of us just have not fully tapped into. But that can change even today, even this moment, as you're listening at this broadcast. So this leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit is also to empower us. The Holy Spirit has been empowering his followers from the very beginning. He empowers us to be who he created us to be and to do what we've been created to do. And the fact is, you cannot fully fulfill your God intended destiny without the Holy Spirit. You would never get there. You would stay off track. You would continue making mistakes. You would stay in ruts. You would stay stuck. Amen. When you find your place, place yourself in a stuck place, hitting up the same wall over and over again. You've got to know, you've got to engage the Holy Spirit to understand how to get over that wall, go around that wall or where the door is so that you can go through it. Or if you need to speak to it (laughs) and just have that wall disintegrate right in front of you. Amen. So to empower, to empower means to give somebody the authority or power to do something. Here are some similar words to authorize, to license, to entitle, to permit, to commission, to delegate. It means to give the power to or to even give the means to because sometimes you have the power to and you know what to do, but you need the means. And so now we could be talking about resources. It's giving the go ahead or giving the green light. Empowerment is to make someone stronger, more confident especially in controlling their life and claiming their rights. Now, that's a definition of the word empower in and of itself. So the Holy Spirit, why is he even important in the life of our of a believer? You probably can answer this based on what we've already taught, but I want to be sure that I outline a few things here. Know that he is our helper here on earth. He's our comforter here on earth. Jesus said in his word, when I go, I'm going to send another. Who was Jesus to his disciples and those he walked amongst during those days? He meant a lot to them. He was a comforter. He was leader. He was God. He was a healer to a lieutenant's daughter that was deathly ill. He was a lawyer to a woman in the word of God that had been accused by many of adultery. He was a savior to Peter when Peter was about to sink while he was trying to walk on water. Bottom line, Holy Spirit works daily, moment by moment in the life of the believer, of the believer if you allow him to. Now, Jesus put a lot of emphasis on the Holy Spirit. He was the subject of intense prayer. Again, this is that John 14 verse. I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor or advocate to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world doesn't see him. So that means that the world could not understand him. And also that because you couldn't see this with the natural eye, you refuse to believe that it exists. Well, we can't see the breath that we breathe on the daily basis either, but we understand that we can't live without it. But you do know him, Jesus said to his disciples, because he remains with you and will now be in you. So two points the Lord mentioned, and that is the Holy Spirit was already real and that he was about to come. At that time, the spirit dwelled with the disciples through Jesus Christ. But they lacked having the Holy Spirit in them, on the inside of them. So now think about it. If the Spirit of God was so important to the life of Jesus, how much more 
would it be to the lives of the believers? So Jesus was sharing the Holy Spirit has been with me all the time. He has been the one that leads and guides me in, in all that I have said and done, all that you have seen me say and do. It's been by way and through power of Holy Spirit. So it's vital for the body of Christ to know Holy Spirit, to learn to relate to Holy Spirit and to understand how the Holy Spirit manifests himself and to learn to walk with Holy Spirit daily. In other words, to practice the presence of Holy Spirit. In order to receive the power of God, one does not need a religious, a religious formula, but rather a relationship with a person. It's a quote by Dr. Kluani Spake. And the relationship that's needed is with this person of the Holy Spirit. Amen? There are many names and titles of the Holy Spirit, and I'm about done. I wanted to share a few of them because we hear him referred to in many different ways, some which we hear in the word of God. Um, sometimes I call this church talk. It's not an era, but it's things that we say so quickly as believers, and we just expect everybody else to know what we're talking about. So I wanted to highlight just a few of these terms for you before we leave. He is the spirit, the spirit of truth. We've already shared that. He is the good spirit, the eternal spirit. He is the Lord. He is the paraclete. This is a Greek word, P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E, -E, and it's translated as helper. He is the helper. He is a counselor. He comforts us. He convicts us of sin, bad choices, wrong ways. He teaches and directs us. He makes us holy, set apart. He empowers us. He is the spirit of the sovereign Lord. That's in Isaiah 61 and 1. He is the spirit of the Lord. He is the spirit of God. That's in Genesis 1 and 2 and 1 Corinthians 2 and 11. He is the spirit of life the spirit of grace. That's in Hebrews 10 and 29. He is the spirit of prophecy. That is in Revelations 19 and 10. He is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And we find that in Ephesians 1 and 17. He is the spirit of justice or judgment, Isaiah 28 and 6. And he is the spirit of glory, 1 Peter 4 and 14. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, let your glory just rest in the households that are viewing this broadcast right at this moment. Let your Holy Spirit rise up on the inside of them, Father. Let it be activated if it has not been activated. Let them move to a place of immersion if they have not been immersed. Let the baptism of the Holy Spirit begin to flow in their lives right now in the name of Jesus. For those that are hungry for asking for and desiring their prayer language or speaking in tongues, let it be released now, Father, in the name of hope, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for just opening them up even the more to be receptive of you. We thank you for dealing with wrong thoughts, wrong teaching, error in teaching, old traditions, old religious habits and practices that have not been of you. Father, I thank you that you are breaking down these walls now in the name of Jesus and that the power of the Holy Spirit shall flow freely in the lives of these believers. And Father, I thank you now that you are moving even in homes now, Father God, that are especially struggling in this time, Father whether it be because of sickness and disease, whether it be because of relationship challenges, challenges with the children as we have been in this time of quarantine. Holy Spirit, you have an answer for all things for you are the spirit of truth. 
We thank you for coming, coming now. We thank you for coming swiftly. I thank you for swift moves of the Holy Spirit in the lives of everyone under the sound now of my voice speaking your word because it is not my power. It is not my word, but this is by way of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you for a dynamic move of Holy Spirit in the homes and the lives of believers now in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise in Jesus name. Amen. So listen, Take what you have received today. Take hold of this word on today. Write this word um, upon your heart. Play it back. Study this word so that you are able to apply it to your lives. Practice it. Speak it. Look at the scriptures. Read the scriptures. Ask Holy Spirit to help you with understanding of the scriptures so that you move forth, so that you walk in wisdom, so that you can accomplish the things that God has for you, so that you can make good decisions and timely decisions. Even right now, we're having to make so many decisions on the spur of the moment. Well, with Holy Spirit, you can be prepared, hallelujah, to say what you need to say, make the decisions that you need to make and walk in a place of peace. That is our prayer for you on today. I am Pastor Victoria with the ARC International Ministries in Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta, Georgia, God bless you. And we pray that you have a blessed week. We'll see you later on in this week. Blessings.